It's often claimed that a more educated population is a healthier population. This may be through more educated populations having more understanding of um, health, or it might be that a more educated population has more doctors, but it's often claimed that there's a relationship between the level of education in a country and the level of health. In order to investigate this, I've collected data from the OECD across a range of countries looking at the proportion of 25 to 64 year olds who have um, higher education qualifications and the life expectancy at birth of individuals within that country. And we're interested in estimating the relationship between the life expectancy as our dependent variable and the proportion with higher education as our explanatory variable. But we think there might be a non-linear relationship between the proportion of 25 to 64 year olds with higher education and the life expectancy. So we, we've decided that we want to estimate the relationship with the natural log of life expectancy as our dependent variable and the proportion of higher education as our explanatory variable. So you can replicate these results. The data for replicating this is attached to this exercise, but we've used ordinary least squares to estimate the relationship between the natural log of life expectancy and the proportion of individuals with higher education. And we get the following results. Our estimated relationship, um, you can see that it's an estimated relationship because there's a hat on top of the natural log of life expectancy. We get an estimated intercept of 4.428 and we get an estimated slope parameter of 0 0.068. And we want to try and interpret this estimated regression. So let's interpret our estimated results. Now remember, there are three steps that we can go through in order to interpret regression results. Step one is to ask the question, how well does our line fit the data? And this effectively is asking us to interpret the R squared. The R squared in this case is just equal to 0.1084. And what this is telling us is that approximately 10.84% of the variation in our dependent variable, but in this case, our dependent variable is the natural log of life expectancy. So it's not the variation in life expectancy, but it's the variation in the natural log of life expectancy is explained by variation in our model or alternatively in our explanatory variable, the proportion with HE degrees. So that's 10.84% of the variation is explained. That still leaves 89.16% of the variation in our dependent variable, the natural log of life expectancy, unexplained. But 10.84%, that's a relatively large R squared. I've seen lots of papers published with R squared smaller than 10.84. Now the second question is, are the estimated coefficients statistically significant? So let's start with the estimated slope parameter. So are the estimated coefficients statistically significant? And what that's asking is, are the coefficients significantly different from zero? So if we start with the slope parameter, our null hypothesis would be that beta one is equal to zero. Our alternative hypothesis would be that beta one is non-zero. Now remember, we're always hypothesizing about the population parameter. So here we're hypothesizing about the beta one. We're not hypothesizing about beta one hat. We know that beta one hat is 0 0.068 here. We're making a hypothesis about the population parameter of interest. So 
In order to test this hypothesis, we need to construct a test statistic or a t-statistic. So here our t-statistic is just going to be equal to the estimated beta 1 hat minus the expected value of beta 1 hat conditional on the null hypothesis being true divided through by the estimated standard error of beta 1 hat. Now, we know our estimated beta 1 hat, that's 0 0.068. We're given our estimated standard error of beta 1 hat. The only thing that we need to add in is the expected value of beta 1 hat conditional on the null hypothesis is true. If the OLS estimator is unbiased, then the expected value of beta 1 hat conditional on beta 1 being equal to 0 would be equal to 0. Because if beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator, the expectation of beta 1 hat is just beta 1. And if beta 1 is equal to 0, then the conditional expectation of beta 1 hat given beta 1 is equal to 0 must be equal to 0. So we can rewrite our t-statistic by substituting in the numbers as 0 0.068 minus 0, that's our hypothesized value for beta 1, divided through by the estimated standard error, which is 0 0.033, and that gives us a t-statistic equal to 2.06. Now, we need to compare that with the critical value from the t-tables. We've got 36 observations here. So because we're estimating two coefficients, we're estimating an intercept of beta naught, we're estimating a beta one, the slope parameter as well, that means that we're losing two degrees of freedom. So the number of degrees of freedom is going to be equal to 36 minus two, which is going to be equal to 34. So we need to look up the critical value in the t-tables with 34 degrees of freedom. And with 34 degrees of freedom, the critical value at the 5% significance level is going to be equal to 2.032. Now our t-statistic is 2.06. The critical value is 2.032. Because our t-statistic, because of the magnitude of that t-statistic is larger than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. We reject H0 in favour of our alternative hypothesis. Now we can do exactly the same thing with our intercept. So let's repeat that and we're going to now test whether or not the estimated intercept is statistically significant. So our null hypothesis now is that beta naught is equal to zero against the alternative hypothesis that beta naught is non-zero. We construct the t-statistic in exactly the same way. The t-statistic is equal to beta naught hat minus the expectation of beta naught hat conditional on the null hypothesis being true, divided through by the estimated standard error of beta naught hat we know our estimated beta naught hat is 4.428. We know that the estimated standard error is 0 0.011. As long as OLS is unbiased, this expected value of beta 1 hat conditional on the null hypothesis of true is going to be equal to 0. So our t statistic is going to be equal to 4.428 minus 0 divided through by 0 0.011 which gives us a t-statistic equal to approximately 402.55. And again, the critical value is unchanged. We still have 34 degrees of freedom, the 5% um, significance level. The critical value is still 2.032. Because our t-statistic is larger than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. So that's looking at whether or not the estimated coefficients are statistically significant. But what about 
economic significance. Are the estimated coefficients large? So we're going to focus in on the slope parameter here. So let's ask the question, are the estimated coefficients economically significant. And the first part of this is to try and understand what the estimated coefficient actually means. So we've estimated the natural log of life expectancy is equal to beta naught plus beta one times by the proportion with higher education qualifications plus UI. Now, if we were to partially differentiate this expression with relation to the proportion with higher education, the beta naught term, we differentiate that with relation to the proportion of HE, that's just going to be equal to zero. Beta one times by the proportion of HE, that's just going to be equal to beta one. And the UI term differentiated with relation to the proportion HE is just going to be equal to zero. So we can see that if we differentiate the natural log of life expectancy with relation to the proportion of HE, that gives us our beta one. But this is telling us the impact of a change in the proportion of the population with higher education on the natural log of life expectancy. But what we want is we want to know the impact of the, a change in the proportion of individuals with higher education on the life expectancy itself. So we're going to need to do something to this derivative. And the thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the chain rule. We can rewrite this derivative using the chain rule to be the same as the derivative of the natural log of life expectancy with relation to life expectancy times by the derivative of the life expectancy with relation to the proportion of individuals with higher education. So this second term is the marginal impact of a change in the proportion of HE on life expectancy. And this first term, the derivative of the log of life expectancy with relation to life expectancy is just equal to one over the level of life expectancy. So we can write that beta one is equal to the product of the derivative of the natural log of life expectancy with relation to life expectancy times by the marginal impact of a change in proportion of HE on life expectancy. Now we can rearrange this to give us that since this first term is just equal to one over the life expectancy, the second term is the change in the life expectancy divided by the change in the proportion HE. We can multiply left and right by this d prop he to give us that we have that d life expectancy or the change in life expectancy divided by the life expectancy is equal to beta one times by the change in the proportion with he. Now, in reality, this doesn't make much sense because the derivative is defined as the, the change in the proportion he tends towards zero. So, Let's move away from that limit and we can write that the change in life expectancy divided by the level of life expectancy is going to be approximately equal to beta one times by the change in the proportion of individuals with HE. So this first term, this change is the proportional change in life expectancy. And this term over here, this delta prop HE is the absolute change 
in the proportion with higher education. So we can use our estimates in order to estimate the impact of a change in the proportion with higher education on the proportional impact on life expectancy. Well, what we've got is we've got our estimated beta 1 hat is equal to 0 0.068. Now, what you could say is, well, the proportional change in life expectancy is going to be equal to beta 1 hat times by the change in the proportion of individuals with higher education. But a question you need to ask yourself is what is a reasonable change in the proportion of individuals with higher education. Is a one unit change going to be reasonable? Well, this is the proportion of individuals with higher education. So if no one has higher education, the value is zero. If everyone in the population has higher education, the value would be one. So increasing it by one wouldn't be a reasonable change. But what we could do is we could look at a one standard deviation increase, which is going to be equal to 0.101. The estimated change in life expectancy, or the proportional change in life expectancy, is going to be approximately equal to our beta 1 hat, that's 0 0.068, times by a reasonable change in the proportion with higher education, which is 0 0.101, which gives us an estimated proportional change equal to 0 0.006868. Now what that's telling us is that a one standard deviation increase in the proportion of individuals with higher education is associated with an estimated increase in life expectancy by 0.6868%.